What is Lime? by Susan Markowitz Meredith. It is called a line. Some lines are short and some are long. Some lines are thin and some are thick. Lines can show us the outline of a shape. An outline is the line around a shape. There are many kinds of lines. We can make straight lines and curved lines. We can make wavy lines and zigzag lines too. Sometimes we can make one big line out of many small dashes. This is called a broken line. We can use lines in different ways when we make art. Sometimes a line is used alone. Sometimes a group of lines are next to each other. We can also make shapes with lines. We can use both thin and thick lines when we make art. Sometimes we can change the size of a line. It may start out thick and then get thinner. We can make lines go this way and that. Some lines go straight up and down. Some lines go from side to side across the paper. Other lines go uphill or downhill. These are slanted or diagonal lines. We can use lines to do many things. Sometimes lines can show an object's texture. Texture is how an object looks and feels. Objects may look smooth or rough. They may seem hard or soft, too. We can make patterns with the lines we use in art. In a picture of a room, we can use lines to put a pattern on a wall. In another picture, we can use lines to add patterns to people's clothes. We can use patterns in many kinds of artwork. We can use lines to make it look like something is moving. It may be an animal running. It may be a person stretching or dancing. We can use lines to show different feelings too. Lines can show that someone is happy or sad. Sometimes we can use just a few lines to show a feeling. Lines are very helpful when we make art. Different lines can make a texture or show something moving. Lines may be straight, thin, and diagonal. They may be thick and wavy. Lines can be anything we want. Every line helps make a special artwork. How do you use lines? All right, so we're going to open up our sketchbooks again for this one when we do this in class. Now, I'm doing this on the back of the first project that we did. This is what the second graders were doing. So that's why you can see that. So we're going to start on a blank page now. And again, you are using pencil, right? You're using pencil, but so you can see it, I'm going to be using pen, but you are going to be using pencil. So. At the edge of your paper, it doesn't matter where, like you can put your hand down here, you can put it up here, put it to the side, right? I'm going to put mine to the side a little bit and I'm going to put my some of my um, forearm on top of the paper. So then I am just going to trace the shape of my hand. Now, as you can recall, perhaps, our hand is a natural shape, right? So there's the natural shape of my hand. So within this natural shape of my hand, I am going to, just like something similar from what we did last class, I am going to put some lines, whatever lines I feel like go into my hand, right? So there's a loop-de-loop -loop that turns into a squiggly line. And let's see, you know what I can also do? Our hand is an organic shape, right? So I can also put some mathematical geometric shapes in my hands. There's part of a rectangle 
And I'm just going to decorate the inside of my hand with whatever type of personality I want it to have. I decided to put some geometric shapes in my organic shape of my hand and I put a bunch of different lines and what I did is I tried to just have it spread out right to where there's that balance that we talked about last class where there's that balance of all of the the busy space and then the empty space right because this is kind of busy there's a lot going on there but then this isn't as busy so there's you know some busyness like this finger is fairly busy so is this one but this one is fairly quiet right so we have our noisy parts and our quiet parts and I kind of spaced them out to where there's that balance and of course, on the outside, you can also have fun with the composition as well, right? You can do whatever you feel is appropriate. All right, so now the big thing that I definitely did that you can kind of still see on the screen, but I definitely saw myself doing, is I, in a lot of places, went over my lines, right? You can definitely see it with the marker. I didn't do a very good job at tracing some of my curves either. And that's just because I got too excited and I did it too quickly. So... As a reminder, what are we doing? What's the lesson? If you said, well, Williamson, you keep telling us to stay within our boundaries and be patient and be careful. Yep, that's what we still need to do. I'm still not doing a very good job of that, so you have to do better than I do. Staying in your boundaries you give yourself and being patient and careful. So, I did, uh, I used marker right? And then colored pencil. So I just have one big question. And I'm going to ask you this about your own artwork as well later. After class. Do you think this is more of a bright or a dark painting picture? Right? Is it brighter or darker? So then is it cooler? Or is it warmer? right? Aside from this warm or this cool, this cool blue line zigzag, right? This blue zigzag line. Aside from that cool line, I'm using a lot of warm colors here. I'm using a lot of pinks and reds and oranges and yellows, right? And that's a lot of warm colors. So is this more of a warm picture or a cool picture? And is it brighter or darker? And 
I'm going to be asking you about your color choices as well. I decided to go this bright, this bright warm route. I'm into bright and warm stuff recently, and I don't know why, but I am. And another thing that I want you to keep in mind is that when you're choosing your colors, right, I put this one cool blue zigzag line kind of separating my wrist and my hand, right? I kind of cut it in half almost. And that's the only really, that's the only um, darker, uh, cooler color I have. And I did do that on purpose. And I wonder if you, if you know why I did that on purpose, if you know the reason. Do you want to take a guess? All good guesses, of course. But the reason why I did that is because I just wanted to separate the top of the picture and the bottom picture a little bit better, right? Because if it was going to be all bright, it would have been harder to separate in our with our eyeballs. So I put that cool blue dark line there to separate the top and the bottom. And so that's how I try to create some balance with my colors. And of course we'll talk about this a lot more in class, but I can't wait to see what you end up doing, right? We're going to finish as much of this as we can at home. And I really hope that, or we're going to finish as much as we can in class and then do the rest at home. And I really hope you see these beautiful, just organic squiggly lines that my hand does, right? Those are my, my hand lines. I hope I get to see plenty of these beautiful, twisty, natural lines in our hands. I think it's the most fun part. So, can't wait to see what we do in class. And I hope that we have fun with this. See you then.